Uh, we achieve our mission through education, research, partnerships, and volunteerism. So Roland and I are Subaru Leave No Trace traveling trainers. And what that means is we live out of this car here. It's parked right out front. Uh, we travel 11 months out of the year. We crisscross all over the country and do um, free educational workshops and outreach. And we do festivals, we do um, trade shows. Really, we go anywhere and everywhere people want to listen and learn. Um, so we camp 250 nights out of the year. We're in a tent on the ground, sleeping under the stars. Um, and we teach anyone from preschool all the way through university level. We work with park rangers, um, outdoor guides and instructors, anyone, again, that wants to listen. Do you have a question? Yeah. What are you doing in the Northwest right now? Well, so we are, we are Team West right now, and we've been on the West Coast since February. Uh -huh. So we started in Colorado, worked our way over um, almost to um, California-Mexican border, and have worked our way up since then, and here mm -hmm. we are now in Washington. So the Pacific Northwest, we've done everything from yeah. schools to we've uh, met with some other partners like yeah. yourselves. Uh, we've done... Yeah. Some Since it's summertime now, we're working more with um, Boy Scout, Girl Scout troops, mm -hmm. summer Love camps. Boy Scouts and Girl Camps, yeah, Girl Scout camps. Um, uh, guide and Outfitters, we've done a few of those up in the Pacific Northwest. Mm -hmm. so. Lots of different things. Cool. Our audience is constantly changing, and what we're doing is always changing as well. So our goals as traveling trainers is to educate, connect, and protect. So education is our top priority with Leave No Trace. Um, we educate people with minimum impact skills that they can use to reduce their impact on the land when they're outdoors, um, recreating, playing, again, even just in cities, walking your dog. And to emphasize that education, we try to connect people to their outdoor places, asking questions as, why do you love to be outside? What do you love to see? What do you love to do? And really connecting people with um, that aspect of why do I love nature and where does my respect for nature come from. Um, so with that connection and education, we're able to protect lands and able to develop um, lifelong stewards of the land. So we believe deeply that we are inextricably woven into the wild and natural world around us. Whether we're directly participating in it, or whether we're in a city uh, living, our lives directly correspond and our health directly corresponds to the health of the natural environment around us, whether we're directly involved in it or not. Uh, so we find that it's, that it's extremely important to connect people uh, because our lives are integrated with these wild places. So we have a pretty unique focus on land preservation. Uh, a lot of conservation uh, organizations, they, do, uh, they focus on legislation or they focus on buying land to protect it. Uh, and our focus is on people, on individuals, on uh, people just like you and people just like me. So we believe that if everybody just did something small to minimize their impact when they're engaging in the outdoors, uh, that that's the key to protecting and preserving these places for future generations to enjoy. Uh, so we believe that we really want to empower people with uh, this idea that these lands, especially our public lands, they belong to us. And it's up to us, it's our responsibility to keep them in good shape and to keep them open and accessible. And so we have a lot of people in the United States and a very small amount of land compared to that amount of people that we have to get outside to enjoy. Uh, whether it's just to get out and bond with friends, whether it's that sense of solitude or serenity or uh, exploration or discovery that you get when you're outside. Uh, so we really just want to create this global respect uh, for the outdoors and this global responsibility that it's not someone else's job, it's not the park staff or the rangers or the cleanup crew, but instead it's our responsibility to take care of the places that we are lucky to have. So a little bit about the history of Leave No Trace as an organization. Uh, Leave No Trace originated in the backcountry in the 60s with 
the Wilderness Act in 1964, there was a huge explosion in backcountry use, especially in backpacking. And that's the first time that we really got to see our backcountry get hammered with impact. Uh, really, a lot of really old school techniques being used. Um, World War II and uh, Vietnam was going on at that time. So in the 70s, um, they came up with kind of a slogan base. They said, we have to do something uh, or else we're going to have to shut these lands down to use because they're just getting trapped. Um, so they created kind of a very loose slogan base. Um, they, put, they put flyers on bathroom doors and uh, things like that. But some of the first names were Wilderness Manners or Minimum Impact Camping, No Trace Camping. Uh, it's more of an idea. Uh, so then in the 80s, the No Trace program was developed by the U.S. Forest Service and it took on more of a humanistic approach to solving these problems and these impacts. So instead of just relying on those brochures thinking, well, what can the people do to minimize their impacts? Um, so then in the 90s, a partnership formed between the U.S. Forest Service and Knowles, which is National Outdoor Leadership School, their huge adventure program. Um, these two companies came together and really focused on the idea of Leave No Trace and developed um, the Master Educator Curriculum, which is our 